Hi, I'm Reba Hervis, Artistic Director at Overshadowed Theatrical Productions. Welcome to this episode of From the Wings. Again, thank you, Rebecca Leland, for being here and joining me today. I'm so glad you have me. I'm so excited for our topics. Well, first of all, I have to tell you news that I have not told you. Are you ready? Okay. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know there was going to be a surprise. (laughs) I'm ready. We got a new subscriber this week. Did you see? (gasps) I did not see. Do you know who it was? No. My husband. (gasps) Chuck. Yes. Chuck Hervis followed us? (laughs) Finally. After a year and a half, finally, what brought this about? We were in the car and we were talking about the fact that we were going to be filming this week. And he goes, do I follow you? I'm from the wings. And I'm like, well, I don't know. And he said, I don't know. And I'm like, let me have your phone. So technically (laughs) you followed us. But I had his permission. (laughs) So um, just to kind of refresh your memory about what we do here is we talk about ramblings, anything on and off the stage. So we'll talk sometimes about biblical things. We'll talk sometimes about what's going on at Overshadowed. We'll talk about um, things in entertainment in the world. And maybe sometimes we just talk about what's going on in the world, just plain and simple. Or maybe we'll talk about what's going on in your life one day. Yeah, when, shoot the breeze. Yeah, you know? we'll just talk. Whenever I have a fun life. Yeah. So we hope that that you will let us know if there's something that you want to hear us mm-hmm. talk about. Mm-hmm. We're trying to make it things that us as artists would be interested yeah. in talking a little bit more about or hearing our thoughts about it. And we'd love to hear questions from you on the topics as well. But we had the opportunity this oh. week to go to a super, super special wedding. Beautiful wedding. Do you want to say anything about that? About oh my the wedding? word. I enjoyed it so much. And I was looking forward to it so much because it was like, it felt like an overshadowed wedding. So Tyler and Angela met here at Overshadowed um, during I'll Be Seeing mm-hmm. You. Um, a while back. I made them dance together. Um, so everyone that we knew from Overshadowed was there. And it was just, it felt so special. Like weddings are special in general, but just where they focused on Christ and had so many happy people around them. It was just so exciting. It wasn't like couple dancing. It was just everybody out there having a great yep, time yep. together, yep. celebrating yep. and having fun. I think part of that was DJ. So our DJ Che, that's what we yeah. called her because it was Ruthie yeah. Che. But on the way home, um, my husband actually wrote Steve Keller, who it, we've been friends with the Kellers for many, many years, and just kind of talked to him about how much he really enjoyed the wedding, how much Chuck did. And in it, he told Steve, he said, well, you know, weddings were around in the Bible too, Steve. (laughs) I love this. Just randomly. Like Chuck was just like, I would like to. And Steve was actually the father of the groom at the wedding. Yes. Thanks for clarifying that. And so it was interesting to see just what that sparked with the conversation for them. And so I thought it might be interesting for us to talk about weddings in the Bible. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. Sorry. (laughs) I thought you, like, Look them where out. she went. It's like, <laughs> like let Woo! me see the private things that Steve and Chuck were talking about. Okay, we'll just no. go to the Bible. We'll just it. talk about the we'll Bible. Look at I'm sorry, but so it the first wedding that is like officially documented ooh, ooh. in the Bible, right, is John in John chapter two verses okay. one through eleven, and I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to start and read a few verses, and it they are these. Okay, <laughs> on the third day, a wedding took place in Cana. In Galilee, and Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. And Jesus replied, Woman, why do they why do you involve me? Always I don't know why I always say it like that, but (laughs) whenever I read Jesus saying woman, that's the way I always do it. Woman, Woman? why do you involve me? And then he says, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Okay. So I think that there's a lot of really important principles that we can learn that are just like right there. First of all, I think we have to look at the history of Jewish, Jewish weddings. Have you ever been to a Jewish wedding? Never. Have you? I have been to. (gasps) What? Yes. And I don't say that I'm an expert. Okay. Okay. By any means. But I think it's interesting to know that, especially in biblical times, that Jewish weddings were typically in the home. And they invited all the family to come, right? It, 
and obviously from this wedding, if Jesus and his disciples all pop in, there's not like there's just one or two of them. There's 12. And they all <laughs> pop in, right, wow, to come to this, this wedding. wedding. And it was okay with the host right. to be there. And they're, they're like, the more the merrier. Let's no wedding come in. crashers back then. Let's wow. celebrate, right? Wow. Because this is a happy, joyous occasion. I love that. Well, you also don't want to be embarrassed at a wedding, right? Isn't that a, a little bit still how we are yep. as people? Yeah. Yep. Don't pop in on my house. It might be messy. Ooh. I don't want you to come in. I want to make sure that everything's okay and in order. So obviously this whole thing about the wine. It was a bit of a, like a, oh, there's yeah. no more wine. It could be super embarrassing, Ooh. right? But the way that Mary handled it was she just made a statement to Jesus. They have no more wine. Now, you know what I really like about that? Wait for it. How often do we come to Jesus and we feel like we have to really explain what we're going through and really whine or say, now, Jesus, wine. (laughs) Very good. You're just on it today. So we have to explain how Jesus could fix it if he wanted to fix it. Well, I'll help you, Jesus. Yes. Let me tell you how you can do it. Yes. I figured it out for you. Yes. You don't have to do the, you know, just the hard work of doing the miracle. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the, here's here's the the bullet points. Right. Wow. But instead she just went directly to him and said, boom, this is the problem. And I thought about how life changing my life would be if I took all my problems to Jesus just like that. Wow. Knowing that, okay, I'm going to make a statement here. This is what I need. This is what the problem is. Yeah. And then I'm going to leave it there. God yep. will take care of it in the way that he sees fit. And yep. and actually, that's what she says to the servants, right? Do whatever he tells you. Wow. In other words, I don't know how he's going to answer it. But whatever he says is going to be it. Yep. Wow. So I thought that it was really interesting to take a this wonderful, joyous occasion yeah. that we could all go to and celebrate the love that Angela and Tyler have together. Yeah. But at the same time, learn a really important principle about what weddings can remind us of <sighs> and what we can celebrate with them. I think that was a big part of their wedding too, was yep. that God was glorified. Mm-hmm. And like the gospel message was shared like during their ceremony. Mm-hmm. Like someone could have been saved through their ceremony. Uh, absolutely. And I love that. I think yeah. like Tyler and Angela, their statement of just, we want God in this mm-hmm. wedding is so clear. And I love that Chuck was like, you know, they're biblical. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't say that to them. They knew it was the oh, dad. It was no. the dad. He was like, just want to chat about this. No. I, love I mean, Steve and Chuck have always had really great biblical conversations. So Aww. it just makes sense that they would take it there. Um, a long time ago, and I don't know how much this, <laughs> how much of a danger zone this is going to get into. Oh, we're entering. <laughs> this is a spill the tea moment. <gasps> here. Spill the tea. Um, when I used to do the big Easter production okay. at the, the church that I went to, I won't name drop any things, but at that particular time, we were very hush hush about the fact that there was wine in the Bible. Oh, I thought you were going to say in the play. No. Uh, <laughs> I was like, ooh. So, um, you know, because we always so talk people to, didn't know. <laughs> well, you know, there's all that drinking stuff yeah. and I, there's a lot of bif- different views on what that means, whether it was grape juice, uh, or grape slightly juice distilled, or distilled, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or you know the good, the good wine, the bad wine, the ugly wine. I don't know, the good, the bad, <laughs> the and the bad, ugly. The ugly. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I, I don't. I, I just know it's controversial. Yeah, for you weren't going to dip a toe in, right? Yeah, you exactly. Gonna, yeah. So when we were doing this Easter play year after year, I thought, well, every year because we have the same people coming to the play, right? right? So every year, let's kind of mix it up, and so I really wanted the celebration feast because yeah. I thought having a wedding on stage yeah. and actually um, having a party wow. and then turning the water into wine. I <gasps> thought that would be like a magic thing that I would love to do. Ooh. I could not get permission no. to do this because it was like, no, we don't want to go there. I'm like, it's the first miracle. Interesting. So it took, I finally did get permission. So the very last year that I did the Easter thing, we did. You turned water? Well, I mean, I mean, okay, no, I mean, I'm not God, God no. wine, but you like <laughs> changed the color of it. Yeah. <gasps> wow. So we had, we had a barrel and we, I mean, it was pretty cool. We, wow. it was, cool. it was cool. But the fact that we were allowed to do it big. was the big point. Interesting. Because, well, yeah. Again, I am not one of these people that sit around and take apart every little verse in the Bible to find out. To me, God chose for a reason mm-hmm. To have that be his first miracle that kind of revealed himself in a different way to people. And right? like, and we, we sometimes we think like it was in the Bible for a reason, let right. alone like he was like, nope, I'm gonna make this my first miracle. Right. Like this is the first time people are like, 
who is this guy? Right, right. And even the disciples, mm, what's going on there? Right? So he joined in with the celebration. Oh. Put his blessing on it a little bit, right? I, I think. love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So anyway, we're going to have to go to another wedding again because we had a lot of fun. I'm so, well, overshadowed. Let's keep going. All I right. mean, there's a lot of couples in the, in the I making. Know. I was going to say, who's next, people? Who's Ooh. next? Well, and until next time. Yeah. This is just, <laughs> whoa. I started doing it. I know you did, but I, I thought it would be mixed up. You could do the next okay. one, I thought. All right, well, do it. Yeah, so you'll go. Yeah. You do it. Okay. Until next time, this is just me. And me. From the wings. Talking to you. Oh, from sorry. The wings. <laughs> you can't do it. You don't get to do it. <laughs> Until next time, this is just me. And me. Talking to you. From, from the, the wings. wings.